A powerful earthquake that has struck off Alaska, and there is now a warning in the Aleutian Islands chain. The, the initial report was an 8.0 earthquake. Now we're hearing 7.1 either way. Aleutian Islands, located at the volatile boundary, where the Pacific Plate dives beneath the North American Plate, have long stood as a testament to Earth's restless power. This morning, as the gray dawn crept over the North Pacific, the world awoke to a cascade of seismic whispers, relentless tectonic chorus far from ordinary. Deep beneath the chill surface of this remote volcanic arc, strung like jagged teeth on the edge of the American continent, a swarm of powerful earthquakes surged across the seafloor. Nine tremors, each registering at least magnitude 5.0, rocked this isolated frontier within mere hours, some occurring so close together, the earth seemed to hum in anticipation. But this is no stray jolt or distant disturbance. The largest upheaval, a magnitude 6.2 quake, rattled the ocean crust at 7.16 a.m. local time, its epicenter just over six miles beneath the sea and 54 miles southeast of Adak, a weather-beaten island outpost, braving the fury of the Bering Sea. It marked only the latest convulsion in a sequence that shows no sign of abating. The ground has shuddered, drawing uneasy lines under the waves and sending cascading alerts through the network of global seismographs that monitor one of America's most volcanically charged regions. Over just two days, at least eight magnitude five plus earthquakes have erupted across the Andrianoff Islands a central segment of the Aleutians. This is no random scattering. The quakes are forming a tight seismic corridor, an offshore cluster that seismologists refer to as an earthquake swarm, a pattern that often indicates migrating stress or fluid movement deep in the subduction zone. Scientists are now racing to model the stress fields beneath the arc, wary of what these shallow clustered shocks might foreshadow. The Aleutians are not strangers to disaster. The region has produced tsunami-genic quakes and volcanic eruptions. Tsunami warning has been issued. We're gonna bring you more information as we get it. But once again, a tsunami warning up in Alaska. We'll watch what's going on. With global consequences, could this latest sequence be priming the crust for a rupture? Or is it the rumble of magma shifting silently through ancient pathways? For now, the answers remain beneath miles of ocean and rock. But in this land, where the Earth's crust grinds, fractures, and reawakens with little warning, each tremor is a message, and none go unheard. Beneath the Ark, anatomy of an earthquake swarm. To understand how extraordinary this event is, we have to look beneath the surface, to the place where the Pacific Plate relentlessly dives under North America forging the chain of the Aleutian Islands. Here, at a remote boundary line, mostly unseen, tectonic plates don't simply glide past each other. They crash, grind, and buckle, building one of Earth's most active seismic regions. A typical earthquake, whether strong or mild, is often just a moment. A single, sharp fracture through stone, spent in seconds. The series unfolding now off the Andrianoff Islands is different. This is a swarm, not a lone quake, but a flurry tightly grouped in space and in time, clustering both beneath the land and out beyond the continental margin. As of today, at least nine earthquakes greater than magnitude 5.0 have struck in less than two days. Some have arrived mere hours apart, maintaining a dogged tempo through the crust Across a DAC and Sweeper Cove, seismic sensors have traced this spreading pattern of quakes, each one sending out oscillations that bounce off buried volcanic roots, reflect through submerged valleys, and ripple along the island chain. The largest, the magnitude 6.2 event, rattled the region with its shallow depth of 6.2 miles, close enough to the seafloor to send perceptible movement rolling through both the ocean and the islands themselves. Scientists are watching, not only for damage, but for signs of change. This is far from an isolated case. 
Past events suggest a deeper mechanism, repeated earthquakes clustering in offshore bands, punctuated by powerful aftershocks and mirrored by swarms that have struck similar coordinates just months before, such as in December 2024, when a volley of quakes unsettled the very same boundary. Could the Aleutian Arc be moving through a cycle of unrest? Or does this burgeoning swarm mark the start of even greater tectonic drama? What complicates matters is the region's dual identity. Not only is it seismically hyperactive, it's also volcanically volatile. The Aleutian Arc contains over 80 major volcanoes, many of which lie underwater or partly submerged. Any change in tectonic stress here has the potential to affect magma movement, trigger submarine landslides, or destabilize hydrothermal systems. In 2025 alone, several Aleutian volcanoes, such as Mount Cleveland and Tanaga, have shown signs of increased thermal output and degassing. Whether the current swarm is connected to those deeper systems is not yet clear, but the pattern is unsettling. Tectonic energy appears to be concentrating and in one of the most geologically dangerous corridors on Earth. Tanaga's Vigil, the volcano awakes. Earthquakes may be the headline, but there is a silent partner in the Aleutian's deep drama, its volcanoes. As the swarm gathered force, the Alaska Volcano Observatory, AVO, raised the alert level to advisory for Tanaga Volcano, located west of Adak Island. A recognition that in this part of the world, seismic unrest and volcanic stirrings often walk hand in hand. Within just 17 hours, seismic stations near Tanaga recorded nearly 20 quakes, many shallow and tightly clustered beneath the volcanic edifice. This tight clustering suggests movement, either of magma itself or of the faults that surround its chamber, nudging scientists to escalate monitoring protocols. Elevated seismicity doesn't yet confirm an eruption is imminent, but what scientists fear is a pattern. The upward migration of tremors, changes in gas chemistry, especially spikes in sulfur dioxide, rapid ground deformation, or sustained harmonic tremor, all signs that magma is mobilizing beneath the surface. To track this, researchers are deploying a network of tools, satellite-based INSAR imaging, to detect minute changes in elevation, broadband seismometers that can detect volcanic drum beats, and airborne sensors that sniff out chemical changes in volcanic plumes even before they become visible. Drones and remote sensors are stationed in key observation zones to avoid the danger of on-site inspections. Tanaga's location also makes it geopolitically significant. Situated along a major transoceanic flight corridor, even moderate ash plumes could reroute cargo and passenger flights across the Pacific, affecting economies and logistics chains across three continents. During past eruptions in the Aleutians, flights from Asia to North America were diverted for days, costing millions in delays and fuel. For now, Tanaga sleeps, but it's a restless sleep. With tectonic pressure mounting and seismic signals rising, the Aleutian arc reminds us that Earth's most powerful engines often churn quietly before they roar. The challenge for scientists now is to separate noise from signal, to detect whether the mountain is merely grumbling or preparing to speak. The historic pulse echoes from decades past. For veteran geologists, these latest events bring the past vividly into the present. The Aleutian Arc has always been a crucible of violent geological energy, one of the very few places on Earth where constant seismicity and active volcanism overlap in an unrelenting display of planetary dynamics. Yet even by Aleutian standards, the intensity, frequency, and tightly clustered timing of the current earthquake swarm is drawing heightened attention. This isn't just a typical seismic week in the Bering Sea, it's a crescendo. Just three months ago, in December 2024, a similar swarm rattled the southern Aleutians, particularly around Tanaga and Garaloi volcanoes. That series also unfolded rapidly, dozens of moderate quakes stacking within hours, as if testing the threshold of structural integrity 
deep within the crust, many scientists now see that event as a precursor, or at least a warning, of what was to come. The magnitude 6.2 quake this time shook the waters near Adak, nearly replicating the power, location, and depth of its December cousin. But this time, it came alongside more numerous and tighter seismic clustering, suggesting not just similarity, but escalation. Could we be witnessing a pattern, a kind of tectonic rhythm that builds energy in episodic pulses, releasing in fierce flurries before settling again into deceptive calm? The alternative is more disconcerting, that the tectonic setting has subtly shifted, unlocking a deeper reservoir of stress or triggering cascading effects that have yet to fully reveal themselves. The Andrianoff Islands, a segment of the Aleutian chain more than 1,100 miles long, lie at a delicate crossroads, formed from the interplay of subduction, crustal fracturing, and volcanic uplift. Their complex geology makes them both fascinating and volatile. The persistent quakes seen over the past several days, nine above magnitude, 5.0, eight within 48 hours, stand apart from the usual background noise. This isn't just a random rattle of minor tremors. This is organized motion, something geologists refer to as a seismic sequence or event train. The question is, even more intriguing, is the spatial behavior of the swarm. By analyzing hypocenter depths and progression along faults, scientists are trying to determine whether the swarm is migrating east or west and whether it's ascending toward shallower crustal layers, a potential sign of magma intrusion, or simply slipping along older fault structures. Each quake is a signal, each aftershock a syllable. And in the Aleutians, those signals are now forming a sentence geologists are racing to translate before the Earth finishes the paragraph with something far more forceful. Swarm anatomy, seismic chains and patterns. What distinguishes a swarm from a typical earthquake sequence? For scientists, it's both the frequency and choreography. Swarms are defined not by a single large shock with diminishing aftershocks, but by a series of comparable events erupting in rapid succession, sometimes with no one quake truly dominant. Each tremor triggers and loads the next, forming a symphony that echoes deep within the earth. The recent activity south of the Aleutians fits this mold. 20 earthquakes in just 17 hours, with the last recorded only five hours ago, and more on the sequence. The unseen menace, tsunamis, landslides, and hidden triggers. The immediate concern during a swarm is always shaking and structural risk. Yet, in the Aleutians, the dangers can extend well beneath the waterline. When earthquakes strike offshore, as many in this swarm have, there's always the question. A Lucian history is marked by devastating tsunamis, including the infamous 1946 event that swept across the Pacific. So far, in this swarm, no tsunami of note has been triggered, and the two most powerful earthquakes were not the right type, nor shallow enough, to release large volumes of water. Still, the potential is always present, especially with continued activity clustered offshore. Submarine landslides are another silent hazard. The flanks of many Aleutian islands and undersea ridges are heavily sedimented. Intense, repeated shaking can loosen great masses of sand and rock, which then cascade downslope and displace water, sometimes more locally destructive than an earthquake-based tsunami. Modern monitoring networks, buoys, tide gauges, and satellite imagery are tuned for such threats. Still, the possibility of rapid escalation and hard-to-predict chain reactions means scientists remain vigilant, analyzing each quake's energy, depth, and mechanism for any sign of possible secondary hazards. Volcanoes on watch. The chain reaction hypothesis. When seismic unrest rises at one volcano, observers naturally ask, could an earthquake swarm at Tanaga mean other volcanoes up and down the chain could follow suit? The Aleutians are a highly interconnected volcanic system with dozens of major peaks linked by deeply rooted tectonic and magmatic processes. To date, 
only Tanaga has seen its alert status raised in direct response to this swarm. Still, seismologists and volcanologists keep a close eye on others nearby, Adagdak, Garaloi, and beyond, for any hint of matching uplift in seismicity or thermal output. Context in the geological record shows that widespread unrest across multiple volcanoes is rare, but not unheard of, in areas where major swarms reshape local crust. When seismic unrest rises at one volcano, observers naturally ask, could an earthquake swarm at Tanaga mean other volcanoes up and down the chain could follow suit? The Aleutians are a highly interconnected volcanic system with dozens of major peaks linked by deeply rooted tectonic and magmatic processes. To date, only Tanaga has seen its alert status raised in direct response to this swarm. Still, seismologists and volcanologists keep a close eye on others nearby, Adagdak, Garaloi, and beyond, for any hint of matching uplift in seismicity or thermal output. Context in the geological record shows that widespread unrest across multiple volcanoes is rare, but not unheard of, in areas where major swarms reshape local crust. The future, unwritten, models, alerts, and uncertainty. In Attic's twilight and across the span of the Western Aleutians, scientists are engaged in a race against uncertainty. Their instruments record a flow of data, earthquake counts, patterns of crustal movement, subtle shifts in heat and gas emissions. Each data point is a clue, but also a reminder that our understanding is always one step behind the Earth's next move. Computer models, fed by real-time seismic and geodetic data, simulate thousands of possible scenarios. Some show the swarm fading away, the Earth's energy dispersing without incident. Others allow for escalation, bigger earthquakes, or even the triggering of volcanic activity if stress crosses a certain threshold, though there is no direct evidence for such escalation right now. When the Earth stirs, the waiting game. Now, as fresh data pours in and each new tremor is cataloged, the region stands in a peculiar tension, a crossing point between expectation and patience. No evacuations have been called. The Pacific remains calm, with most on the mainland unaware of tremors far beneath the ocean surface and more stories from the world's hidden geological frontiers, be sure to follow. What do you think? Is this just seismic noise or the first step in something far greater? Out here, where land and sea trade secrets beneath the waves, the earth is never truly silent.